So we're going to go ahead and welcome the Sabbath. Now, I'm hoping this will bless you. I'm going to move through it, and I'm going to show you how we celebrate it in our family. But this way, you can learn and surprise your family, too. Once we light the candles, I often will think of something that I'm grateful for. Some of the big things that we are not allowed to do on Shabbat is uh, write. Any kind of writing uh, would be prohibited. All of our co cooking and food preparation has to be finished on Friday afternoon before sundown. We don't look at our cell phones. We don't write emails. We don't drive in the car to run an errand. My kids don't even ask for television or computer games or anything like that. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kiddishanu bidvaro, v'natan lanu et Yeshua mishichinu, v'tzivanu lehiot, hola olam, amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your word, given us Yeshua, our Messiah, and commanded us to be a light to the world. Hello, sisters in Christ. I pray that you are all doing well. I'm going to be talking to you today about the Sabbath and what Jesus showed us about the Sabbath, what we can learn from him regarding the Sabbath and rest and, and works and labor. Um, I do receive quite a bit of questions about this as to whether or not I honor the Sabbath, um, what, you know, what is the Christian's role and what we should do in, um, regarding this. And um, I honestly, I have not given it much thought because um, I always, you know, considered myself a Gentile and, um, and don't keep the outward feasts and, and holy days and Sabbath days and new moons and all of that. Um, but I do know that this was a commandment of God to keep the Sabbath. And we know that the Lord takes this very seriously. We see many passages in the book of Ezekiel about the children being disobedient and polluting the Sabbath days. And, um, and so we know that God is the same. He is the same. And His commandments never change. So what does the Sabbath mean for us as Christians today after Jesus came and, and had His per perfect sacrifice, His work done on the cross? What does that work then mean for us um, so let's talk about this. Uh, what were some examples of what Jesus did on the Sabbath? We know that in John chapter 5, Jesus healed a lame man at the pool of Bethesda, which actually means house of mercy. And this man had been there for 38 years, crippled, couldn't move. He, need, he actually relied on on other people to take him into the water. Um, and he was desperate, desperate to be healed. And Jesus had compassion on him and saw him and healed him. This happened on the Sabbath day. And so the Jews that saw this were very angry and wanted to kill him for working on the Sabbath. But Jesus responded with a very good response. And that is, my father works even unto this day, and I work also. In John chapter 9, we see that Jesus healed a blind man from birth. And he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And he said this right before he healed the blind man and gave him his sight. So what was Jesus saying there? 
In 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, it calls us the children of light and of the day. So what does it mean to be the light of the world? Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So Jesus is, he is the light. He is our light. And we are the light of the world. What sets us apart from the rest of the world? That light. But what does it mean? Those good works that Jesus was referring to were works of compassion. They were works of mercy, selflessness, forgiveness, truly loving our neighbor as ourself. And Jesus showed us that by, by saying, I, I work now in, in the light. I am the light of the world. I work now while it is yet day. And we are the children of the day. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. And ladies, the Lord Jesus, he set that example for us that we are to walk even as he walked. So doing the will of God, we know that it is his will for us to have that mercy and compassion on our brethren. It is his will for us to serve and not to be served. And this is what brings us rest. This is how we are able to enter into his rest. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we know when he's speaking about this, that he is speaking to the children of God. He is speaking to us, those who labor and are heavy laden. You know, there are many times when I can feel this. I can feel this heavy, heavy burden of laboring. Um, when you minister to the saints of God and you have that true compassion in your heart and you are suffering along with them, you are carrying upon their sorrows. And this is, you know, this is labor. This is the labor of love, though, that Jesus, he, he embodied. He was mercy. He was self-sacrificing love. And we are to have that same mercy and compassion on our brethren. So right after this, right after Jesus talks about rest and how we can come to him and receive rest in him, Jesus tells the Pharisees that God will have mercy and not sacrifice. After they accused him of doing evil on the Sabbath because he was feeding his disciples who were hungry in the cornfields, so there again, we see another act of Jesus on the Sabbath. What was he doing? He was feeding the brethren. He was providing for them. He was filling them up. They were hungry and they needed to be fed. And so he shows us, ladies, that in doing the will of God, doing labor involves just that. It involves feeding the hungry feeding the poor in spirit. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus told the Pharisees that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. That rest that the Lord wants us to enter into is made for us. But it is not, this rest is not something that we achieve on our own strength, that we say, you know, that, that we determine. 
This rest Jesus gives to us, it's given to us. We see with Jews, Hebrew roots people, they are so desperate for that righteousness by their outward deeds. And so they think that they're resting from works. That's why they don't, you know, there's no cell phone, there's no um, nothing. It's, it's just a day between them and God. And which that's, that's great. That's great. But this is rest that they are achieving themselves. They're not receiving it naturally from the Lord. And they're resting from dead works. They're resting from worldly, outward things. I celebrate Friday night dinner. I sometimes go to synagogue. I sometimes don't. And then on Saturdays, I tend to think, do things like not go shopping and spend money. I wouldn't host a party on Saturday. A really religious, orthodox person will not do anything like that on Shabbat. They will only go to synagogue and then be in their home or you know, in a friend's home, not drive, not work, nothing like that. And so knowing that there's a day during the week where I know I can put everything down, I can stop cleaning, I can stop worrying about cooking, I can stop worrying about work and filming, and it's just a day where I can just rest and I can just get as much sleep as possible. And then we, after we've had service with the people that we love in the morning, then we take a good old fashioned Shabbat afternoon nap. Do you know that the best nap ever is after you've worshiped God? Some of the sacred space of you resting is you just having a sandwich and a nap. So take care of yourself and get some rest on Shabbat, at least once a week. Recharge your batteries and get enough rest. It's not a rest that, that happens naturally in their soul by doing the will of God. And it's very important for us to understand that. We have another example in the book of Matthew where Jesus went into the synagogue and he said, what man will there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? So right after that, he healed the man with the withered hand. He strengthened his hands and he said, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. This is these works of compassion, these works of ministering to the brethren. This is God's will for us to do. This is his will. In Luke 13, Jesus healed the woman who was hunched over with the spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And the ruler of the synagogue, the most important, you know, in worldly uh, standards, the most important man in the synagogue said to Jesus, there are six days for this lady to come here and get healed. Come on one of those days. Don't come on this day. He shut up his bowels of compassion towards this lady. And Jesus was responded with something so cutthroat to the soul. He said, thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? So this day when most people are by themselves, they lock themselves in their house. Um, they think that they are in a form of worshiping God, but they are blind. I think it's very, it's very interesting how in one of the rituals that the, that the Jewish people do, when they're all you know, saying their prayer and singing their song, they're covering their eyes. And it is, it's like a blindness. They are blind. They think that they're doing these sacrifice, these outward deeds of sacrifice that are pleasing to God. 
after they're done, they walk away, they feel good. They feel, their flesh feels good. Like, yes, I did something. I did something I'm supposed to do. I kept the Sabbath. But they don't even realize that, you know, that true worship, true worship that God desires is mercy and not sacrifice. He is pleased. That that true worship is loving the brethren. It is having mercy on our brothers and sisters. It is feeding them. It is strengthening them in spirit. And this is, this is true worship. This is true worship. Mark chapter 1, Jesus cast out a devil out of a man in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And then that same day, he healed Peter's mother-in-law of her fever. Luke 14 Jesus healed a man who had the dropsy, it's called, which is a form of edema. And he said to the Pharisees again, which one of you that has an ass or an ox that's fallen into a pit, will you not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? So Jesus did a lot of work on the Sabbath. He did a lot of work. And he showed us that that true worship in God is not ceasing from doing those outward works of the world, but doing that labor of love, that self-sacrificing love for the brethren, praying for one another, ministering to one another, forgiving one another, having that mercy on them, strengthening them, serving. This is true worship. We've got to understand, ladies, what true worship really is. And it is not the outward things that we do, but it is laying our life down, laying our life down, suffering with our brethren. This is what brings us that rest in Christ. Jesus is our rest because we follow the works that he did. You know, he did say, when we're standing before him, and he tells us, when I was hungry, you fed me. When, you were, when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. And we're going to say, Lord, when did we do these things? When did we, when did we visit you in prison? And then he'll say, even as you did this, as unto one of the least of these, my brethren, one of the least in the kingdom, you have done it unto me. And so that is his will. Jesus said, I, gave, I give you a new commandment that you love each other even as I have loved you. He didn't just do these miracles that we could be like, oh, great and wonderful. Wow, Lord, Jesus really showed us who he was. (laughs) He did this to set that example. He was the first. He was the first, and now we follow. We are his sheep, and we follow, and we do the works that he did, that our Father does even unto this day. We work. We labor in the field. Hebrews 6.10 really sums it all up because it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. We visit those who are imprisoned spiritually. We visit those who are sick spiritually. We feed them when we minister to them. We give them drink when we minister unto them. When we have that true brotherly love for them, this is very, very important to God, very important to Him. 
And so I want you ladies to understand your walk is not just your own. It is not just your own. You are carrying the burden, burdens of your brethren, of your fellow brethren. And why is this so important to God? Why does he care so much about the labor that we do for others? Well, because his son Jesus is the reason why we are saved. His son Jesus and his mercy and his ministering is why we are able to walk with the Lord because of his sacrifice on the cross. And it's beautiful because he, pa- he has passed that down to us. And that is what we are to do. I'm understanding more and more that being conformed into the image of Jesus is not just ceasing from outward sins. That doesn't set us apart. That doesn't make us the light of the world. Why? Because Muslims, they cease from outward sin. You know, there are many religions that have that form of of godliness, but they don't have Jesus, which means they don't know what it means to have mercy. They don't know what it means to truly love your brethren and lay your life down for them continually because they're focused on their own, quote, salvation in whatever form that looks like. They're focused on their own salvation. But the Bible tells us, let every man look upon the things of others. Let every man esteem others higher than himself. This is what is pleasing to God. This is that sacrifice. These are the works that he wants from us. And this is what will give you that natural rest. I have many times, ladies, I am just completely overwhelmed in tears when I'm, when I'm ministering. And it's such a gift that God has blessed us with to be able to do this for our brethren. And then when we go to him in prayer, we receive his peace. We receive his rest because we know we are doing his will from our heart. It's a beautiful gift. It's a blessing that we have this. So The Sabbath rest to me in seeing what Jesus did is rest that we receive naturally in our souls from the Father through his son Jesus. This is the rest that we receive in doing God's will. And what is his will? that we love each other even as Christ loved us. Truly love one another. So I pray that this message blesses you. I hope you all get a better understanding um, as to the Sabbath and what it means. My advice, and I believe that the Lord is pleased with this advice, is that it's not... It's not so much you locking yourself away in a room every Saturday because you never know what sister you, the Lord may be calling you to minister to that misses out on that because you've just wanted that just day where it's just you and God and no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, it can't, it can't be that way, ladies. You'll miss your opportunity to serve and to do God's will and worship the Lord. Worship Him, not in word, but worship Him in deed. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
So I love you all, and I will talk to you very soon. And I just pray that this message blesses each and every one of you in your walk with God and continue to stay on this narrow path, continue to strive for that righteousness, for God's will and what he wants. All right, I'll talk to you soon, ladies. Be blessed.